Hey guys, we thought it would be fun to take a little time to answer some common questions we've been getting about the whole topic of hardware synth integration. In a nutshell, hardware synth integration is an amazing new feature of our flagship synth Omnisphere that lets you control it just like a hardware synth. Everything you were just hearing me do was actually Omnisphere. It bridges the gap between our software and the hardware synth world in a unique way that's never really been done before. We're now supporting over 65 hardware synths and new ones are being added all the time. Of course, with any brand new concept, there's gonna be some misunderstanding sometimes about what exactly it is and what it isn't. So let's get into it. Okay, our first question is from a hardware synth fan. What is the point of turning my beautiful analog hardware synth into a controller for a software synth? That seems insane. Why wouldn't I just use the awesome sound of my analog synth that I love? Well, of course you can use both. It's not a choice between one or the other. So don't think about this as replacing your hardware synth, but expanding its possibilities. Because there's really so much that you can do with Omnisphere that's simply not possible using only your hardware synth. For example, you can add polyphony to something like a monophonic synth like a Voyager. You can make it polyphonic. You can have multiple instances in your DAW. You can split and layer sounds. You can even put your own audio into Omnisphere and control it from uh, the Moog Voyager or another hardware synth. You can add Omnisphere's amazing effects and explore the vast sonic universe of Omnisphere, which includes granular synthesis, FM, and so much more. So here's the thing, think of it this way. You've already got a hardware synth that you love and now you can also use that same great hands-on experience to work with Omnisphere 2. Okay, so the next question is from an Omnisphere user, so this is coming from the software side. This seems interesting, but I'm already super happy with using Omnisphere in my DAW. Why would I really need to use this hardware synth integration thing? Well, I'm stoked that you love Omnisphere so much, but honestly, the biggest limitation of all software synths, including Omnisphere, is really the user interface and that you have to do everything with this thing. So there's something very special about this, the tactile experience of using hardware synths that's so inspiring. Because that sense of touch is so powerful and intuitive to our brains as musicians, hardware synths tend to be a lot more engaging and really encourage sonic exploration. Hardware and software both have strengths and weaknesses, of course, but with hardware synth integration, you've got something that really bridges both worlds and brings out the best aspects of each. The potential of endless uh, sonic possibilities in the software, but with the well-designed limitations of the hardware. It's really fun stuff and you can have your cake and eat it too. All right, so next question, and we get this one a lot. Is it hard to set up? It's actually super easy. You simply connect the synth, open the hardware menu, the top of the interface, and you select the hardware profile for that synth. Boom, that's it. And if you need help, you can go to the setup instructions and it's got everything that you need uh, to get up and running. It's super, super easy. So make sure to try it out. Okay, next question. Cool, but I can't afford all those expensive hardware synths. In order to get access to the sounds of the hardware profiles in Omnisphere, do I need to own all the hardware synths? Nope. In fact, you don't need to own any of them. Every Omnisphere 2 user has access to all the sounds of the entire hardware library, which is actually pretty big right now with over 1,600 patches. And we've got some very good news as well. We're now supporting several models that are only a couple hundred bucks. So you don't have to spend too much money to try this out with, uh, with the hardware synth. Okay, the next question. Are all the sounds of my hardware synth included in Omnisphere now? No, all the sounds in the hardware library were specially created in Omnisphere using the hardware synth profile and that actual synth. They do have a lot of the personality of that synth, but they're not recreations of the original factory patches or anything like that. In other words, these are all fresh, brand new sounds that we created just for the hardware library and they came out awesome. Okay, next question. Can I make patches with the sounds in the hardware profiles even if I don't have these synths? Absolutely. All the core synthesis functionality is available to every user 
including all the new hardware synth wavetables and specially added filters, all the modulation sources, etc. Okay, the next question is from also from a hardware user. Are the sounds from the hardware synths just samples of those synths? No. In almost every profile, we're using custom modeled oscillator wavetables and not samples. And we only use those when it's absolutely necessary, for example, in the D50. And this gives the most flexibility for synthesis. All right, next one. If I own one model of hardware synth, can I access and control the sounds from another model synth in the hardware library? Definitely. Let's say if you own a Prophet 6, you can control the Moog Sub 37 sounds in the library. If you own a DeepMind, you can control the sounds of the Prophet X. So anything can access and control anything else. It's really cool. All right, next question. Cool, so can you just control any Omnisphere patch from the hardware? Yes, this is a big one and one that a lot of people seem to miss. You can use the hardware synth profile to control any Omnisphere patch. Of course, the sounds we programmed for that model's profile are gonna work the best with it, but most of the functionality should still work pretty well with any patch, and this is a super cool thing, because Omnisphere has a lot of patches. Okay, next one. So what do you do when a hardware synth has features that Omnisphere doesn't have? Great question. We either try to develop these features and add them into Omnisphere, which is actually what we did, uh, and one of the main reasons that we decided to change the architecture from two layers to four layers, and we added a state variable filter and many other things, or the other thing we do is that we assign that control to something the hardware synth doesn't have, but is really useful to have on that synth. Like for instance, uh, the external input on the Voyager uh, turns into an effects send. Super useful because the Voyager doesn't have effects. And last question. This seems like a really cool idea, but why has no other company ever done this before? Well, it's probably because it's insanely hard work and no one's crazy enough to try this except us. <laughs> okay, so I hope this has been helpful in understanding what the whole hardware synth integration thing is about. And if you've got additional questions, please don't hesitate to shoot us an email or give us a call. Cheers and happy noise making. How's it going? My name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and in this video, I'm here to give you guys a quick overview of the new Phaseplant synthesizer from Kilohertz. Phaseplant is a new semi-modular synth from Kilohertz that features the Snap-in ecosystem, so this is an incredibly powerful tool for both sound designers and music producers. So let's dive in and take a look. All right, so what we have in front of us here is the main UI of Phaseplant, and Phaseplant is broken down into three distinct sections. We have generators, modulators, and effects. So the generators would be the things that produce sound. So we have a couple different oscillator types here. We have analog, which includes all the basic waveforms. We have noise, which allows us to shape the noise between brown and white. We have sampler, which is a sampler that you can load in samples. Uh, there's also a bunch included in the factory library here, which is great. Then we have wavetable, which is a wavetable oscillator, which includes a whole bunch of different wavetables in the factory library. And uh, you have full control over creating your own, which we'll touch on in the next video. Also within the generator section, there's a couple of effects. We have a distortion, so you can insert distortion at any point during the generator here. And then we have a filter, so this allows us to switch between the standard filter types. So this is a state variable filter that you can insert at any point in the generator section. Beyond that, we also have a couple of utilities in the generator section. We have group, which allows us to create a group. Aux, which allows us to create an auxiliary section. Mix, which allows us to have a leveler or a mixer inserted into the generator. And then we have output, which allows us to have an output sent to the output of any of the lanes over here in the effects section. So let's go ahead and take a look at modulators and modulation inside of phase plant. So we have a couple different modulator types. There's an envelope, which is just a standard envelope. LFO, which is an LFO that has all the basic shapes built in. You can also create your own or set it to one shot mode to create a multi-step envelope generator. You can also set these to free or sync. We have the random, which is a sample and hold or sample and glide type LFO. So this allows you to create some really interesting randomized modulations. We have MIDI, so we can send aftertouch to anything we'd like. The note, 
pressure or velocity. And then there's a couple utilities, which are maximum, minimum, and multiply, which are handy for more complex patches and a couple other things. So when it comes to modulation, there's a couple of different types. There's standard modulation and audio rate modulation. So let's take a look at both of those within phase plant here. So I've got two analog oscillators and a filter. So for a basic modulation, what I could do is set this envelope with this orange plus icon to target the filter cutoff. So now as I play a note here, if I adjust this envelope, this is going to change the filter cutoff point. We can also do audio rate modulation in the generator section. So using the second analog oscillator, which is below the output, I can use this green icon to create audio rate modulation of the saw analog oscillator. So right now I'm modulating the phase with the sine wave. We could also adjust the shift or semi-tuning here. So we can create linear and exponential FM this way, as well as phase modulation. Uh, with the phase, which allows us to do a whole bunch of different things for sound design purposes, which is excellent. So now let's dive into the effects section. So the effects are broken up into three lanes, and these lanes can be routed any way you'd like, which is really nice. So we have our output here, so we could send this analog oscillator to lane one, lane two, lane three, directly to the master output, or to the sideband input of any of the effects that support sideband. So in this case, I wanna send this analog oscillator to lane one. Within lane one, we can load any of the snap-ins, and for presets that use different snap-ins that you don't own, those will actually work fully, you just can't tweak the parameters of the snap-ins you don't own. But you can cherry pick and buy the ones you like or get the complete collection. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a quick filter to this first lane. This is going to send to lane two, and in lane two, I'm going to add a frequency shifter. I wanna mix this in at 50%. I'm just gonna shift this up by 1.5 Hertz. Then this is going to be sent to lane three, and on lane three, we could add a quick reverb with just a very short decay and very small size, and we get this. So now using a modulator, we could add a quick envelope to this. So we'll go ahead and create an envelope, and I'm gonna target the filter with this envelope. We'll go ahead and do that. Then I wanna create an LFO, and I want the LFO to target the mix of lane two here. So I'm gonna set this to zero, and now this LFO, if we slow this down, is going to target the mix. So we can set this to be unipolar. We'll add more decay to this envelope here, and then maybe a quick delay right before this reverb. So we'll set this to sync mode, mix it in like so. We could add some unison and detuning here. We'll go ahead and add a random uh, right here with sample and glide. So I'm gonna adjust the smoothing. I'm gonna target this to the sync of this oscillator here. There we go. We'll set this to unipolar. All right, so now we've got a basic synth lead patch. So from here, we could do a couple of other things. We could add glide by enabling glide. We'll set this here. We don't need global unison, but we could add global unison down here. We'll set the polyphony to one voice, and I want this to be re-triggered, but you could set this to legato. The master pitch, we're gonna leave it as it is. We'll set the bend range to 12, so that'll be one octave. Everything else should be all set. So from here, we could add a couple different macros. So I wanna set the mod wheel to also target the filter cutoff. So we could drop that down lower, and now as I move the mod wheel, that'll adjust the cutoff point of the filter. We could set macro one to target the feedback of the delay. Then I could right click and CC learn this to my controller, which I've already done. So now if I move that uh, corresponding controller knob here, that will adjust the delay feedback. And we get eight different macros that we can utilize to create more complex and interesting patches with lots of small subtle modulations or something totally completely insane. But you can see this allows us a lot of flexibility for patch creation and you can do a whole lot of things. So then we'll go ahead and add one more analog oscillator here and I wanna use an audio rate modulation on the phase and I'm gonna set macro two to target the level here. So I wanna target this by 50%. We'll drop this down to zero and we can tie this macro to another controller here. And as I move that, maybe mix in a bit more delay. We could adjust the mod wheel as we play. And now we get a nice synth lead patch that we can use. Nice.
And that's it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. And if you want to check out more information on Phase Plant, you can find that today at kilohearts.com. We are super excited to introduce you guys to something that we've been working on for over 10 years. Keyscape is an epic virtual instrument that features the largest selection of collector keyboards in the world. The process began with going to the ends of the earth to find and restore each one of these rare and incredibly special instruments with the top technicians and expert craftsmen from each discipline. We even went as far as spending years redoing these instruments from scratch again and again until they were totally right. This insane attention to detail and meticulous care given to each instrument allowed us to develop these sounds to a whole new level of authentic tone and inspiring playability. After so many years of work, it was a huge thrill for our team to show Keyscape to some wonderful players and get their reactions. Hey, that sounds so good. Impress me, Eric. <laughs> My God. Killer. Yeah, yeah. Love it. It's a great accent sound. Amazing. <laughs> Stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely the best I've heard. Especially with the raw stuff, definitely. Yeah, for real. It has cojones. That's right. So Eric, it has major cojones. <laughs> yes. The kind you put the sauce on. Yeah. Yes! With a steak knife, Eric. Every keyboard is best in its class, presented in the highest quality. Let's take a look at the grand piano as an example. This custom modified C7 is fitted with a special hammer felt used during the pre-Cold War 
golden age of German pianos. And because of this, the tone, dynamics, and sustain of this particular instrument are astounding. Weeks went into manicuring the voicing to achieve the widest tonal palette. And special care was taken to create gorgeous warmth at softer velocities and more bite at higher velocities. Our software team then closely modeled the authentic behavior of subtleties like pedal noises and release overtones. The interface was designed to offer new features like our character control, which allows for unprecedented versatility.
that's just one instrument. Keyscape actually includes 36 instruments at this level and hundreds of variations. Obviously, we don't have time to show you all of them, so this is just a taste. For example, Keyscape has the most extensive collection of electric pianos of any virtual instrument ever. We've gone to great lengths to ensure that every era of electric piano sound is represented from the incredibly rare 1946 Rhodes pre-piano to the highly revered Whirly 140B, the classic Model 200, three different rare pianets, huge sounding vintage electric key bass instruments, the iconic 1973 Rhodes Mark I suitcase and stage models, wild discoveries and rare finds, the CP70 electric grand, vintage digital classics like the MKS-20, all the way to the latest modern electric pianos handmade by Vintage Vibe. And we are very excited that Keyscape features one of the most sought after instruments of all time, which is our LA Custom Model E Rhodes. Ah. Oh, this is just gorgeous. I could eat this with some ice cream, you know. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> If you're sitting in front of it, and then you can mix them together. So instead of just the, the DI, you've got the. Okay. 
guess I'll put mine on eBay. <laughs> Thing. It's just like yeah, some crazy... Yeah. Not only are the sounds extremely authentic, the custom controls presented for each patch allow you to go far beyond the original sound. It's like a it's like a bit crusher, but it doesn't just sound yeah. like you turn on a bit crusher. It's like right. this weird interactive. Yeah, yeah. The harmonics are all are all lowered. With many of these vintage instruments, it's really the imperfections that make them so interesting. Take the clavinet for example. The rare clavinet C has all kinds of funky quirks and noises, which are a big part of its vibe. Instead of cleaning all that stuff up, we made sure to closely capture all the grit and grease of the original. <laughs> Yeah, man. It sounds crazy. Oh, now we're talking, oh, baby. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh. Yeah, now we're getting into it. crazy. I don't have enough drinks in me yet to start doing that kind of thing, but that's the thing I could do all night by myself. I got Victor's Brew playing in the background. I'm all kind of, well, I'm here. Many of the rare instruments we discovered for Keyscape create extremely unique sounds. For example, the wing upright piano has pedals that engage tacks and bouncing ball bearings to create interesting acoustic tremolo effects.
Some of the most inspiring sounds in Keyscape are the hybrid sounds, which take two of the instruments and create something entirely new. And there's one more thing. All the sounds in Keyscape will also work inside our flagship instrument, Omnisphere 2. This allows Omnisphere users to harness the full power of the steam engine to explore endless possibilities. That's great. I know you yeah. guys only work at that level, you know, the highest Thank level you. where it's all like dynamic and there's no question about it that it really comes from from you, you know, from, you know, this atmosphere and this spectrosonics, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man, man. Thank I really you. appreciate this. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. It's great. Fantastic. Great. Congratulations. Thank you.